this lecture, we will explore how we can create our own custom curves in Flutter. And as you can see, the example that I have in front of you is a normal sine curve. And to facilitate with this, we will be using the Desmos program to just draw out the graphs before we incorporate them into Flutter. So as you may know, a sine curve is just an oscillating curve that goes from a value of one to minus one to one to minus one. And we know in Flutter that a curve needs to go from a value of zero to one. So there's a couple of things that we'd want. If we know that the curve needs to span from a time of zero to one and a value from zero to one, we want this curve to at least have a couple of oscillations within this time frame, And we also want it to be limited to this value over here. So I'm gonna jump a bit ahead and just show you the curve or the final curve that we will make in Flutter. And here you can see it does one, two, three, four, or at least it does three loops or, or oscillations within a time from zero to one. And by time, I actually mean the interval from zero to one. So if we take a look at the code, you can see that here I'm creating the page and it's using a curve of sine curve. And this is a custom class that I made. So it's a sine curve that extends curve. And all you need to do to implement your own curve in Flutter is extend the curve class and then override the transform interval. And then you get access to the time value. So the time value is the value from zero to one. Or if you look at this graph, it will be the value of X. So the value of X and then the value of the function will be FX. And in this instance for Flutter, the value will be what we will, or the FX is what we return in the transform interval. So this value over here, you can see this is FX and the double T T, we can say T equals X. While this will be the function. So if you take a look at this function, you can note that this is different to the example we have here, or at least different to the normal sine function. So the first thing that we'd like to do is we want this curve to oscillate two times or at least one full time. So it needs to go from zero, top to one, then minus one and then end. And it shouldn't end at two, it should end at one. So let's just zoom in a little bit. And to do that, we need to just multiply this two times pi. And two times pi is essentially 360 degrees in a radial value. I'm not really gonna delve further into the mathematics behind the sine function. However, I will link additional resources if you are interested. But all you need to understand is that two times pi will essentially be one full loop of the sine curve. So if we wanted to loop multiple times, for example, let's say three times, we can just multiply it by three. So now it will loop three times within a time interval of zero to one. But now we have another problem. We can see it goes from minus one to one, and we know we want it from zero to one. So it's a little bit busy now. I'm just gonna get rid of the three for now. And now what we want to do is we want to decrease this entire um, length by half. So we're gonna multiply this by 0 0.5 or actually we can just say divide by two. But for purpose, demo purposes, I'm actually gonna say multiply this by 0 0.5 because that's what we do in code. So now you can see it goes to a max value of 0 0.5 as we would expect and a negative value of minus 0 0.5. So now all we need to do is just move this entire curve up. So now we can just say plus 0 0.5 and there you go. Now we have a value from zero to one and it stretches from um, a height of zero to a height of one. And now if we multiply it by, for example, three, you can see it does three loops within our boundaries. And the function that we have here is the exact same function that you can see over here. Please note that how we created this function, we can use a similar method to basically create or pass back any value. If we wanted to, we could just return one and that would be a fixed value. We can create a linear curve, which would be a straight value or a straight line. 
we can create an exponential curve. We can literally do whatever we want in this little function over here. If we wanted to, we could also do weird if conditionals. So for example, if it's bigger than 0 0.5, return this curve. If it's smaller than this value, do this. So there is no limit to the curve that we can make. And to further illustrate that, I've also made this spring curve. And what the spring curve does, it is a spring, or it's a springy curve. So as you can see, it has this little bit of a spring effect. And if we take a look at this function, you will note that it is the exact same function that we have over here. And you can see that we have two separate constants and we can modify these to basically achieve a different springy effect. However, there are a couple of things to note. If we, for example, increase this to be too much, you will see that the oscillation is very high. So now if it ends at a value of one, the end value will be closer to minus zero point, no, not minus, closer to 0 0.75, meaning that there will be a jump in the animation when once it finishes. So actually, as an example, let's take these values. And in this curve, I will supply these. And now you will note that the end point for this graph is slightly below the value that we want it to be. So you'll see there's this little bit of a jaggedy switch at the end as you can see there. Let's actually slow the animation down so it will be a bit clearer. Now you will see it's clear, smooth, smooth transitions, and then suddenly it shoots to the end. And that is because a curve needs to honor those properties. It needs to honor the fact that it will start at 0, 0 and end at 1, 1. If it doesn't end at 1, 1, then it will just force itself to end there. And that's why you will see at the bottom here, it makes a straight line from the last curve value that we had shooting up to make sure that the end result is one. So meaning if we do want to create our own curves, we would need to ensure that the end value actually ends close to one. And that's why I had that initial value that basically ensured it was at least a close approximation to one. So for example, here, it will at least semi-closely end at one meaning it won't be as jarring of a change. However, you may note that in the sine function, it does not end at one. It ends closer to 0 0.5 when it's at a time interval of one, which I'm showing you because once it is at this value of 0 0.5, it is also the same as the initial starting value. So as an example, if we do something like repeat the animation, so currently it will just stop and finish, you can see it jumps to the end. However, if we do something to make sure that the animation will repeat, and for that I've added this property to this example demo that will make the animation repeat. And if we do a hot restart and explore the animation again, this time you will see once it finishes the animation, it just starts again at the exact same point and just continues in a smooth transition. And you will not note any change if you just look at the Flutter logo going left and right. You will also note that in the spring example, it overshoots the value of one. So I've previously said that it should be between a value of zero to one. Well, technically it doesn't need to be. It is, this is just the framework. It's basically the percentage from zero to 100%. However, if you do overshoot it, that's fine. It will just basically mean it has an overshooting effect, which is exactly what we want in this particular animation. But yeah, that is that. The sky is literally the limit when it comes to creating your own curve. And in the next video, we will actually be creating a fairly different curve, but this time we will use a custom tween instead of making a custom curve.